Okay, so it is the 17th of October. Welcome to Breakfast with the Masters. We've been off for 10 days. And uh, let me say a special happy birthday to my mother. She's 96 years old. Passed her driving test last week with 100. Um, and we should all be so lucky, right? So, um, any anything, uh, yeah, any, anything's possible, right? She's shooting for 108. I don't know where that number came from, but we'll see how that goes. So, anyway, talked to her last night. Sounds great. Uh, says she's not flying anywhere for anybody anytime again. But other than that, she's she's doing good. She was on the phone with Toyota bitching them out because her brakes on her brand new lease were all locked up. So she told the guy, come get the car or I'm going to burn it. <laughs> So I guess that's how you say it, 96 years young. <laughs> um, all right, so dead Greeks. This is really the nature of motion, guys. And um, we have talked about this, talked about this, talked about this, talked about this, talked about this. The good news is um, over the last two weeks, um, I've gotten emails from members of this group, uh, Somebody finished out uh, their month. Uh, their end of September was their third consecutive profitable month, finally. After six years of trading, they finally had three consecutive winning months. Pretty good. That's a, I'm sure that's a great feeling, to finally turn the corner and wonder, geez, am I ever going to get there? And the answer is, yeah, you can get there. Um, somebody else that's been so close just sniffing it and couldn't quite get over the corner uh, sent me three nice charts of three really nice trades really one of them was ten and a half to one um, so they're getting it a um, couple of the people long time people sent some beautiful charts um, they're trying to lengthen out their profit targets um, like BJ and Pat have done and they're starting to get it. So, you know, I, I think success is, uh, is, uh, it catches on. So, roll your sleeves up and make it happen. Okay? We don't, you never know if it's this week, next week, this month, next month. The key is to survive the educational process until it clicks. Does, does every, everybody understand that? If you can get the crazy out, and just repetition, 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 without blowing your account and do whatever it has to take. It's like I tell my daughter who wants to be a professional trumpet player, you gotta do what it get gotta do what it takes. Whatever it takes. And the people that are able to do that are the people who make it. At this point the crazy is my weak point. Well, no, I don't think so, Gene. I think you you you're underrating yourself. You, you know Gina, you've been with me almost a year now. Or maybe a year. And uh, I know you pretty well. And you've made tremendous strides this year. So, Oh, yeah, your analysis is much better. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Some days I just want to hit those buttons. I get it. I absolutely get it. I mean, that's the nature of humanity. But, you know, when I first met you, Gina, you'd hit those buttons all day long, didn't you? And now you don't. So you've learned to control. And is are you perfect every day? No. 
but you're a hundred you're you're 180 degrees what you were a year ago all right well it's good can I say that a lot she just said she did an impulse trade last week and then she cut herself off and put herself in the penalty box good that's the only thing that's going to help you because you want to trade you feel like trading you need to trade okay so when you do something wrong or you get ragged you got to cut yourself off you got to get some balance back so maybe you're going at it too hard your king says reading 189 crude helps a lot too fast for me to trade though well nothing wrong with practicing at that speed and then you know when you slow down it'll seem like the ball is a beach ball instead of a little golf ball right it's just as bad as not being well yeah Carlos has got that right Gina the other side of that is there are people that freeze up and Carlos says it's just as bad as not being able to hit the buttons there are people that freeze up and and I, I get them in, in mentoring where you know the focus is they're, they're frozen they don't know what to do I mean they they can chart they know what the trade is and they just can't pull the trigger yeah exactly right and that's a whole different issue well it's a whole different issue but um, it's equally painful so we can fix it though I was freezing up a few months ago need to find my happy sweet spot well we'll get you there Gina it's okay that's what we're here for so today we're gonna do a trade I find writing that check helpful for that freeze yes it should we gee that's it if you actually do it I don't know how many bother you probably most people think I'm you know baddie and that's okay but it takes all the emotions I find at least it, it just Matt says helpful for me as well if you have to like I said print out fake checks and write the damn things out and then rip, rip them in half and throw them in the garbage can it, it just takes the emotions out of the rest of the trade okay the money spent we can do the charting but my mind and thinking messes me up well it just means Lewis that you gotta slow down a little bit and uh, it's, you know it's it's like learning a waltz or learning how to paint by numbers you just need to slow down and wait for it to happen this is a trade today that is it for me was kinda of slow motion I knew what I wanted to do and it took a while for me to be able to see where to do it and I think it's so important even if you know what you think the trade is if you can't see the right place to trade it's not an opportunity does anybody follow me and that's a big problem waiting for it so especially when you walk back in you know I was you smell it but you don't see it yeah I mean I'm like okay I know what this trade is but it's like well, where the hell is it at that's what happens in my brain and you're pointing it out really helped okay so let's let's see that's the problem says Thomas okay so let's watch and see I can see it I can smell it I know it's coming and I'm like the hell is it but if you try and rush it I'm gonna tell you I'll show you several areas where I could have traded and then probably gotten washed out or gotten broke you know break break even that kind of stuff so <clears throat> generally when I come back from time off and you know when I close the fund like that for the year it's you know it's happy happy obviously there's no more pressure right and you go wow look at that that's really nice you have that little meeting with yourself at the end of the month right but it it's also it's kind of bittersweet too and it's, so it's a little bit of pressure because you know you're done so even if you're trading for yourself then you're starting over so you know I don't want to be sitting here twiddling my thumbs the rest of the year so I gotta get back in the seat so it's knocking the rust off it's getting rid of those emotions and all those other things so let's see how we how we deal with this I tend to go back to uh, a market 
you know, one of the markets that are really easy for me. So I'll, that I like a lot. So it'll be something like Canada, maybe Aussie if it's on a run. Um, but a real general market for me, if it's moving, are the bonds. So, you know, as I just paged through the market, when I got back home, I was like, wow, well, these things are rocking. Let me see if I can find me a ride. So let's see. So these are the bonds. And you can see the line of force, right? I did, it's not curve fit. How many of you can just draw this? Just 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 take your cursor and just go vert and after you draw for a while, you don't even have to look and say, well, am I bisecting this or whatever? It's like your hand just automatically grabs the center line. Okay? I'm not even looking at this to this or grabbing this or this. I just grabbed this and went and pulled up. And if you practice enough after a while, your hand doesn't need your eyes in a weird way. And I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's important that you get to there someday. So there's this beautiful line of force up. It looks to me like cash is going one place and one place only into the bonds, doesn't it? Now, I wasn't watching anything while I was in Vegas. Um, I did take a computer, but to be honest with you, um, I didn't even bother. Hi, guys. Kitties came in and said hi. Um, so, and um, the last thing they want you to know at Vegas is where the stock market's at or the bonds or anything else. They just want you to know the what. there was a uh, international Baccarat tournament in the, in the Venetian that we were at, and uh, which I like. So we come in, and that's an interesting bar if you look at the whole section of trading. And at this point, I'm doing replay. And as I unfold it bar by bar, you see that bar. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Okay, now everybody's talking about wind change and top sellers are here, right? Long time. It's if long, then it's time to exit, right? Is there, if you're not a possible range, okay, Gene, I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind. Okay, so if you if you don't have a position, is there anything else that might come into your mind? Well, I, Shane, do you want to get short? Yeah, pull back to get long, a couple people said. And I, that's what I'm thinking about is maybe this thing will pull back and show me that it's got a quality. Yeah, is this a top? And will we get a pullback and find a quality bottom that I can buy? Because it looks like it's strong, strong like bull as we used to say in the early 80s. So, okay, well, some follow through to the downside. So, you know, after running this through bar by bar and seeing this thing work its way up and thinking, well, that's a ride I'm not going to catch. It makes me begin to think that maybe there is a ride to catch here huh? if we get a nice pullback. Come down, leave a low. Shakes all the chasing buyers out, then maybe I get in. Okay, I'll go with that. Hi, Sharon, how you doing? Pull them back up. And new highs, new high close. So I'm like, ah, well, maybe not yet. 
slightly higher high but close on the low follow through follow through closing on the low closing on the low you can see these are almost down ticks and by the way this is 1444 so it's a a little slow and you'd expect um, actually I looked at 377s sorry 7770s 777s and I thought it looked a little clunky so if anybody wants to know how I go back and forth I just don't like the feeling of this it's just it's too boxy so I just went uh, you know I think I like the 1444s better popped over to the 1444s and went okay that that looks a little it flows a little different maybe it does for you maybe it doesn't I don't know I mean sometimes I'll go all the way down to 377 in the bonds but not now these things seem to be rocking so, so you can see them down tick double bottoms blows the double bottoms now we're gonna see if this is a box or if it's just a pause triple bottom pull them back up pull them back up in the range hey and makes a high closes on its low so those are the things I'm this is important to me this is important to me this is important to me even though we're at the high end here it seems to me like we're going to get a pullback okay I'm not predicting but I will tell you this even though I felt like we would get a pullback I wasn't interested in getting short now there are sh there is a short here and if you want you can look, take a look at 1444s there's a nice short here I, mean, I just wasn't interested in it um, at this point I for whatever reason my mindset was because you can't see the downside yeah my mindset was, Ouija, um, after just running through that first set of bars, my mindset was um, the opportunity here is if we get a pullback, is to buy a pullback. Um, but it's going to have to present itself as an opportunity, not just go to some level. I don't see... A, there's not a level in my mind it just that's the way I'm leaning this if you are two-sided this is an area that's starting to appeal for a short and there's plenty of room in this thing is it the motion of price that told you yeah I well it yeah I think the motion of price um, just like I could draw this center line without looking the you know it bleeds into you and I, I try not to but you know once it's there it, once it's there for me Ouija I have two choices I can either work with it or I can go to a different chart you follow me I can either admit okay well Okay, I, well, okay, that's good. So we just says, no, I don't follow you, okay? So I can either admit to myself, okay, I've got this, I'm leaning to the long side already. So I can cautiously go ahead and walk forward, try not to step on any landmines and look and see if there's an opportunity. Or I can just say, you know what? I don't want a bias. So I'm just going to go look at Canada because I already got a bias in the bonds. I have a choice. Okay, make sense? It's not that make sense? Now I'm not just going to naked buy Ouija. It's going to have to build. You don't have to act on the bias. It has to play out. Yeah, it, it's going to have to build an opportunity, and the opportunity is going to have to make sense. But for whatever reason at this point 
even though I can see that it looks starting to look topish here, I'm not interested in, and I expect a pullback. I'm not interested in this. I'm interested in the long side. I think there'll be a bigger run on the upside after a pullback than the pullback. So I don't want to play the pullback and get caught trying to work my way out of the pullback to get long and miss the opportunity. We've talked about that before. So, we're in this nice spot. It's a very nice box now. And um, slightly lower high, triple tops, but they get busted. And just a whole lot of nothing, really. Let's be honest. It's just a, uh, it's not a bad range. It's a 19 tick range, which is lots of, mo lots of money, but it's not real tradable. Okay, finally bust out of the bottom with a little bit of gusto there. And I mean, I'm not going to draw it, but I'll draw it, then I'll just erase it real quick. I mean, there, there's opportunities here abounding if you want to trade. Okay? This is, this is the maximum excursion right here. AC, see it? Bob? I'll put it in for you, but same line. Which is what, and my eyes said, you know, well, there, if you want to get short, buddy, there's your trade. So as it swung back up, my eyes said, well, this is an AC line. If you want to trade, here it is right here. And we're talking about a, uh, a tick stop. For me, that's what I use in the bonds. Now I'm not. This is not going to be uh, half on, half off. This is just a trade. So it's got all you'd want if you want to be short. It's got all you want, doesn't it? And I mean, you can trade all the way down to there. So. This is definitely a nice short. I just don't want it. Just wasn't looking for it. So, anyway. <clears throat> We're breaking through the bottom. Go ahead and take these. Don't, you know, just because I didn't. Go go look at these. There's about, uh, in the period we're going to look at, there's probably about a, 10 trades. There's two stellar trades. Just absolutely God awful, wonderful, God wonderful. I, I don't know what the other side of God awful is. Just gorgeous, Gigor ginormous. But there, but there's some just great. If you want to just trade bonds all day, this was a great period to just be a bond trader, and uh, I think that's going to continue for those of you that trade bonds. So don't be shy. Come down, leave a low, start to tick up, double bottoms. Try and take out the low, but close on our high. Try and bust. Look at it. Tap, 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 tap. Clumping, right? Now, I really, again, this is mostly a bond thing for me. You can use it however you want. But for me, I really just pay most attention in the bonds in this. So I see this. And again, I'm biased to the upside, so I'm scratching my head with just this amount of data on the screen. Not stuff over there. It's so yesterday, guys, as far as I'm concerned. It's even, you know, same day yesterday. I don't care. So as I look at the screen, and I see it clumping here. Does this present an op Do you think this presents an opportunity to me? Ouija says, would this be a perception bar, this last bar for you? Um, well, yeah, what it says to me, Ouija is trying to push it, trying to push it, trying to push it, trying to push it, trying to push it. Oops. So 
I got a lot of yeses, and then I got a not yet no, and too late in the day for a corner, says Scotty. It's not necessarily going to be a corner trade per se, but Sharon says she wants to see a wash. Paul says there is enough space for a trade. Well, I, I got a question for you, Paul. Ready? This is a regular trade, not a corner trade. So where's my where would where's my stop? Ah, Shane said it before I as I was saying it. I don't see a stop, says Shane. I'm happy for you, but I don't see a stop, says Shane. Right? So as I watched it, I'm looking at the clumping and I go, Well, I, hey, there's a pullback and here's some clumping, but uh and again, could I squeeze in and and find something over there on the left and put in one of those, you know, squirrely shaded rectangles. Not, I'm not going to, I don't do that. I really don't. Not interested. So I go, uh, uh, I got my hands out, you know, I know you can't see it, but I got my hands out, but I'm like, uh, I can't write the check because there's nothing there. I ain't doing it. Well, let me just show you. That don't work for me. There's nothing. Yeah, I don't know what's under there. Do you? If I don't allow you to squeeze in, do you know what's under there? I have the faintest idea. Okay. And this, you know, I get, I get charts from you guys where you go, just so you know, I wanted to give you a perspective of the low here and then you squeeze in you know so there's five times as many bars so I can see the low I don't know what the, this is what I'm working with which is this this many bars I don't know what the low is and I don't care because this is what I'm working with as far as I'm concerned what are we doing we're looking for a bottom right there's no net underneath me here I'm naked so I'm not willing to play. I still think it's the way to go. So price is going to have to show me the way. And right now I'm looking at it going, ah, geez, I, I want to buy here, but I can't. It's not, so it's not time. Okay? So Ouija, that, that kind of plays into what you asked before, which is, it, yeah, it's going to have to show me that it deserves to be bought. I passed on the short, and... Um, you know, it was, you know, 26 points to the downside. That's a lot of money. Gina says, maybe this could become the net. Maybe. But I do know one thing. It's not time yet. So I passed on almost $1,000 a contract. Now I'm sitting here and I don't have a stop. And this is, you know, th this is what I was looking for, an opportunity, except there's no opportunity here. There's just... You know, some minimal behavior. Minimal behavior is not enough for me to trade. Got that, Gina? I want to get long. I want this to be the area. Because I just passed on a, you know, $800 or $900 of contract trade to get to this area. But it doesn't have what I need. So I can't trade. I just can't. The answer is no. Okay? Got it? You just have to know inside the answer is no. It doesn't fit. It doesn't work. So be patient. So, okay. Well, let's see what we get. Yeah, there's no there's no impulse left in me. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know how long it's been, but I just I you know, no. So I'm gonna we're gonna A work on today. Where's the opportunity? And then B we're going to work over something that we've worked over the last three sessions and see if you rec when you recognize it, see if you remember it. So, all right. So following through to the upside, I know a lot of you are now like, crap, trade's over, right? That was it. Right? How many people feel that? But the answer, the real answer is, trade. 
the opportunity no because there's no there's no entry there's no trade yeah right impulse gets replaced by wisdom well that's that's a I appreciate that Carlos <laughs> I don't know if it's true maybe wisdom teeth maybe but yeah I I mean I just I don't feel that because there's no there was no opportunity I just feel okay well here's a experience okay impulse gets replaced by experience okay so here's the pullback and here's my first move out look for the shoulder not the low well it, that's that's a that's good that's good logical thinking Ouija so let, let's see what the market gives us because right now it hasn't given me what I need uh, Double bottom, new highs, double top, triple top. I would expect it to run up to the excursion. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's give you a couple more lines here. And at the excursion, and through the excursion. All right. So I'm scratched my head. If this thing is on the way up, this should not be a lower high coming up, right? Now, if it's not a lower high, how does that play into my trade opportunity? Yes, we'll be building a new controlling swing. That's correct. So what's that say about my trade opportunity here? If we don't leave a lower high, we have range expansion and we might be building a stop, Petra, yeah. But I'm basically, uh, you know, up the river without a paddle. I'm going to need some kind of pullback or something, right? I'm going to have to wait for another pullback. That's right, Scotty. I'm, in other words, um, I don't want to use the word cycle. Let's think of it this way. As the world turns, so to speak, this turn wasn't my turn, so I'm going to have to wait. For, yeah, the next spiral, very good, Ouija. I'm going to have to wait for the next spiral to, to, to develop. That's exactly the, what I was looking for. Thank you. Does that make sense to all of you? So I missed this leg, especially if it doesn't leave a lower high, and I'm going to have to wait for the spiral as it expands to then come down and give me something else because I didn't want to be short on this part of the spiral and this part gave me no confirmation if it takes this out it's a confirmation that my thinking was right but I don't have any money in my hand do I so that's part of the the solving of the of the emotional issues which is don't worry about the money. The money will happen. Worry about finding the opportunities, then the money will happen. And I know that is easy for me to say. And, you know, I know a lot of you have small accounts and need the money. I get that. Um, so that's where framing smaller trades comes in and taking opportunities that maybe I, I'm not willing to take. There are opportunities in here. For example, you can go back on 1444 bonds and take a look at a test retest in this area and see what it gives you. Um, I'll show you at the end the beginning of the the second stellar trade. We're not, not going to work it over today, but um, there's lots of trades in here. You just have to find the one that fits you. And the one that fits you might not be the one that fits me. So let's see whether or not it leaves a lower high or takes it out. That's a interesting looking bar, so maybe there's going to be a pullback. Makes a low but closes on its high. Right back up into that area. Now we've got triple tops at that area and taking that area out. Double tops. Pulling back so it's it's a tug of war here. Now we've got triple bottoms. 
upticks closing on the high as you can see somebody's buying and that busts there's the we're not going to have a lower high are we and this is the prior high so now we've got a double a 2d double top so obviously the spiral turned down and now the spiral is turning up see it sorry wait the spiral turned down now the spiral see it winding and turning up can you see it can you feel it so I'm gonna have to sit through this leg even though I wanted to buy this leg because it didn't pre present the opportunity that I wanted now maybe this was an opportunity for you maybe this shelf was an opportunity for you and you can go back and look this over yourself uh, start on the 7th of October and walk it forward and you, you'll see there's a bunch of trades in here okay and a bunch of day trades so heading at the highs pull back a little bit but a wide wide range bar and this is uh, it's 2 in the morning, so not that unusual. Make a high, and this is just about the time I get up, about 20 minutes before I get up. Inside, inside, another new high. So they're just rocking and rolling here, guys. Now I'm up for about 45 minutes. New high, pull back. another new high so now I'm watching the spiral unfold the good news is my logic was right the bad news is the opportunity for me at least didn't present itself so I have to watch the trade that I'm looking at it's now the 9th of October unfold in front of me and I got nothing in my hands How many of you at this point are going to go, well, screw this. I don't, have to, I don't need to watch this because I might get pulled into an impulse trade or whatever. Anybody? Nobody? How do you deal with this? No, but sometimes I should, I should walk away. Okay. Not anymore. I just watch. Okay. Do you need to watch it for a day, two days, all day long, every tick? What do you do? Might not watch closely for a while because I know the opportunity won't be so near. Okay, I like that. Most days you're watching Na um, sorry, uh, the NASDAQ all day. Okay. you got a plan and certain requirements, so if it doesn't fit, those and just watch and Shane I would be like Ouija I'd be just kind of peeking in and out because it's out, it's out of my opportunity right now Scotty says I would be thinking I was hunting and missed it I would try to reset so I don't be biased on something that has just passed okay there's nothing to do right now but later maybe <clears throat> Thomas says I'm glad you talked about that all right just have to wait I'll wait and look in it periodically and that's what I'm doing is Again, let me just say this again. I'm not interested in the short tide. Now, I know the short side gave an 800 point trade, but now the upside is giving us 1500. You have to wait for the market to screw up. Okay. I'm going to have to wait. Can anybody tell me what I'm going to have to wait for? In terms of the language that we've just been using? Not the screw up language. Although that's what it is, Carlos. I think the next spiral turned down. That's right. So if I'm correct, and that's a pendulum pullback, I'll, I'll have to wait until this expansion of the spiral is done, and then it'll turn back, and then we'll have to find out whether or not it's a 
spiral that is is uh, equidistant or a spiral that's expanding which would you rather have expanding gives you more room right now it can it can expand in two ways can you tell me how it can expand in two ways Sideways and sideways and upwards is exactly the right answer, Petra. Price and time or space and time, yeah, 2D and 3D. Okay, okay, extend higher or broaden out. Yep, exactly right. Okay. All right. So right now we're at we're making new highs, so it doesn't matter. We're on that leg of the spiral. So all I can do now is just peek in every once in a while and say. What's the ride here? Again, I'm not interested in selling. And you can see they're upticking. You know, and I, I'd love to be on for this ride. Not, but I'm, I'd am i love to be. Leave double tops, start to pull back, but right back at it. So we're boxed in, and then we take out the high, but close on our low, and down tick and close on the low. So I marked this. This is my second alternate alternating pivot. So I've got an A and a B. If I have an A and a B, what's the slope of this median line? Up sloping. Yep. Almost impossible to draw a down sloper. <clears throat> Leave a shelf, bust the shelf. So now, is this the pullback? Is this the spiral turning? I wouldn't have marked it if I didn't think this was the spiral turning, right? Nice frequency in the tops. Okay. So now the question is, if this is the spiral turning, what's the spiral look like? Is the is this the pullback? Is it a, is it actually a physically lower low? Does it expand by moving further and further to the right? In other words, the range. What kind of spiral am I dealing with here? That's the question I have to be asking myself. Okay, because I don't want to get in too early on the spiral. I need an opportunity, right? So one of the things I'm going to be thinking about is, as this unfolds, is, you know, okay, what's the natural path of this spiral? What am I dealing with? Th think of, you know, if you have trouble envisioning this, <clears throat> and you live, uh, well, almost anybody, anywhere around the Pacific Ocean, think of it as a typhoon or a hurricane. Where are you at? relative to the, the cone up, you know? So we are pulling back. Boxed in again. And we bust the box, okay? And leave low, no follow through, retest it, retest it. Okay, what's this look like to you? <clears throat> Clumping. It does look like the first pivot. In fact, it has the for me it has the same problem as the first pivot which is I'm not sure about the quality of the bottom are you sure about the quality of the bottom yet now <coughs> excuse me 
yeah, it looks like a minefield to me. I, yeah, I'm not so sure. And I'll, I'll give myself a go, and I'll go here just to remind myself. Come on. So, as I look at the go-no-go, -no -go, and again, I just look at the data on my screen. I, 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 I don't know. Not sure. So, but I do have one thing going on, which is I've now marked three alternating pivots. Now, th I might erase this one if we take these lows out, right? <clears throat> but if this clumping holds at all, I've got my first median line. And that'll help a little, at least. Maybe orient myself. So here's my first median line. And we're clumping, obviously, at the C. And this is about, looks like a nice center. Yep, the center's nice. And this is about where I drew it. So, obviously, I can't trade here. But, yeah, I can take a look and say, you know, hey, nice touches on the center line. Okay, I like this median line. This this works for me pretty, pretty well. So, what can I do with it? Now, if you're, if, if you're, if you want in, if you get any kind of close with separation, you can afford to trade, right? I don't like that bar, do you? Well, I sure as hell don't like that bar. So now I'm going to just take this and put it up here. So now we're outside the lower parallel, and I'm. I get this new beard growing with a, a longer goatee portion, so I'm. I pull my goatee. That's not what I'm looking for. Okay, now we're on the switchback, testing it. Not what I'm looking for. Okay, we do regain it two bars. Well, I want to see some buyers. And then we're right back outside again. How do you feel about this median line? How do you think I feel about this median line? Or how do you feel about this median line? Either way. So-so. Getting a bit sloppy. Forget it. Doesn't give me anything. Is price moving outside the median line? Sloppy. Difficult to be enthusiastic. Not great yet. Okay, what can we use median lines for? Is this really C? That's a good question, David. I like that one. What can we use median lines for? Information. Timing. So maybe this median line isn't the f frequency for my entry, right? I'll do the modified shift for you, sure, but it's not going to do anything for you. I'll tell you right now. Maybe it will. I don't know. I'll leave it, but I'm going to turn it back because I didn't use it. But <clears throat> I, I've talked. I've been talking about this a lot lately. Passing off median lines. Okay. Sometimes a median line, especially a big one like this is a timing median line <coughs> or it's a target but maybe it's not the entry okay so let's see let's see how it works as a modified shift I didn't I didn't use it as a modified but let's look Shane and it busts a modified shift and we make new lows so at this point I mean I could slide it over 
Um, but to be honest with you, I just left it on and said, well, maybe th maybe this is a timing median line, but it sure is hell ain't an entry one. And that's okay because I don't mind range, range extension to the downside, right? I, in fact, I don't mind range extension at all. All I want is an opportunity with a stop. I don't care where I get it. I need a quality stop. I need a pullback. I need a quality stop. And then I need an opportunity. And right now, at any point in here, do you think that I had an oppor opportunity? Why do you think that's still your C? Well, Matt, okay, let me explain it again. If I'm using this, see the clumping? Well, I don't know that it's going to work for timing, Ouija. I don't know that it's going to work for anything. I do know this, it's not going to work for an entry. Okay? Would you agree with me, Ouija? Okay. I can erase it. There's nothing wrong with erasing it. I can chase it as it moves over and moves down, right? Or I can just leave the damn thing on the chart and see how it plays out. Because right now it's obvious. One thing is obvious to me. Can anybody tell me what it is? Real simple. It's more than it's not C. I'm, I'm talking about in general. What, what in general? It's not ready to trade. Scotty, exactly right. Ding, ding, ding. This is not the time. Price is still searching for a low. Matt's right. Matt's right. It's not the time to trade. So just slow down. Just be patient. So I can erase it, but it's not time to trade anyway, is it? So just literally relax. I can. You can erase it if you want, but do you, do you have anything better to put draw right now? Other than the advanced multi-pivot lines, anybody name anything? Can anybody tell me anything else to draw? So let the bars unfold. Leave it up there, or don't. I leave it up there. There's no reason to take it off. In fact, I'm gonna throw a warning line on it. And I'm just going to watch price and see what unfolds. Because right now, obviously, what I have is nothing. Okay? I want to get long, and it ain't time. And maybe it's not ever going to be time. But one thing's for sure, it's certainly not time right now. So, okay. No harm, no foul, right? Didn't cost me a cent. I was, you know what? I was never even tempted to put an order in here. As you watch this bars, these bars unfold, were you ever like, oh, let me get in here? There's, there's, even for impulse traders, I don't think, I mean, maybe you would have, maybe somebody would have forced one here, but I, I was never even, was never even a question for me. I just went, eh, it's nothing here. It's, it's mush. This is, this is my first sniff at a possible, but yeah, it's just not there. Would you agree, Ouija? Yeah, we have not built a stop yet. Impulse traders would definitely not have placed an order. Okay, so let's see what we get. So we make a new low. Now we're pulling back up. Now we're on the switch back. Now we're inside it. Now you could play this game if you want. The problem is... If you put the sliding parallel in here, see it? You, you just can't get to any logical place for a stop. Do you see that? Yeah, I don't know the quality of the bottom. The stop is, yeah. It's not time to trade, okay? Trading up here, is is forcing I hell I'd rather trade up here now than trade up trade here 
something you know I need something to tell me it's time to trade and none of this tells me the stock the spiral uh, there you go Carlos has got it what's going on with the spiral yeah it's not okay we spiraled up we spiraled down and as we spiral down we're broadening we're not right we're widening out or broadening so that's why it's not particularly pleasing for the trade because right now we're burning off this spiral with a big fat turn okay nice little wash yeah so we're gonna have to wait for it to do its nice this is a nice big fat wide turn we're gonna have to wait for it to do its thing or it's not gonna turn but that's if that's the case then I'm not gonna trade but if it's gonna if it's gonna turn it looks like it's gonna be a big fat turn so I'm just gonna have to be patient no impulse just be patient then and, and again nothing here even remotely flips my switch I don't not even vaguely interested so <clears throat> here we are back inside this median line and you know okay I'm happy about that but it really doesn't interest me <coughs> excuse me making highs nice pullback now we're back underneath again so you can see this is the you know this is a kill zone really this is a great way to lose a lot of money if you're a new trader now you guys are not new but if you're a new trader and you know you think it's easy to make six or eight ticks in the bonds this is a great way to lose your money you know buying the breakout because it's got momo good luck with that selling it because it's got Momo good luck with that even if you would bought this you're right back down here now and how you feeling nobody is getting paid here do you see that will not be able to answer for a half hour computer oh okay no problem take care BJ just watch so and tell your IT guy I said hi. Um, yeah, so it's it's even it's not even just a range. It's just this is this this is what a spiral does as it broadens out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's technically a range, but you're going to see this is what a spiral does as it broadens out. But it's got some characteristics. Let's see if we can pull them. Let's see if we can pull them out of this. Okay, because we have probably haven't talked about this yet. So when a spiral broadens out, it's got some characteristics. It gives you lots of false hopes, unless you're disciplined. And any of these trades would have been losers. There's trades in here, but they're losers. They're not even big enough for break even. Now we're right back at the low. See it? So it's like, crap, I missed a trade. Oh, wait, we're right back at the low. Um, do I want to trade now? Anybody? Anybody want to trade now? Why? Why not? Don't know what it's doing. I think that's a perfect description, Matt. What the heck is this thing doing? And there's no stop. And it's just as weird down here as it was up here. So let's not play. Let's wait for an opportunity that we can recognize. Double bottoms in 2D. Slight new low. It's really triple bottoms. And then they uptick it. Mirror bars closing on the low. Starting to move back down. It's a big yawn, isn't it? really now it's end of US day right tick 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 
Dick says, G that's right, Gina. It's just, it's not here. Okay? But throughout this whole thing, Ouija, I know this is going to drive you crazy when I say it. Throughout this whole thing, I know that there's a long trade coming. I know there's a big long trade coming. I can feel it. I can smell it. I just can't see it. It's building? Maybe. I don't think, I know, uh, we've talked about this before. I don't think it's talent. I think it's intimacy with a market. Okay? If I thought it was talent, I wouldn't show you this trade. I don't show talent trades. Okay? Winter is coming. Um, what the hell does that mean? What are you watching too much? Um, uh, uh, Game of Thrones? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Very good. That's that's what I was asking. Yeah, very good. All right. Yeah, I, I love George R. R. Martin. Uh, sorry. Um, and for those of you that don't, never mind. Um, yeah, winter's coming. I can I can feel it. I can smell it. But I don't see it. Nice, nice multi-pivot line. Okay. So let's see what we get. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five bottoms. Six bottoms. Fix the little Indians. Yeah, I know it's not politically correct. You can't say that anymore. Open on our high, close on our high. Yeah, exactly, Matt. And now we're back to our original. Here's our clumping. Remember this? We are myelinating, waiting waiting for the trade. Are we going to dock in slowly into the warning line? Oh, Lewis. So, yeah, as I look at the screen, I see 2D and 3D. Do you see it? Now, I don't know what that means, except you know that when I see 2D flowing into 3D, I salivate, right? You know, I'm I'm at that point I'm Pavlovian, unfortunately. So I see it, and that that definitely does play into what I'm thinking about. Yes, I'd be afraid. I'm starting to make myself see things. Well, I actually, Matt, that's what I'm asking myself. As I was watching this, I was saying, I know it's 2D into 3D, but is it 2D into 3D and? That's why you're taking the trade, or is there a real opportunity there? You follow me? Shane, Shane says it gives us. Well, Shane, let's talk about that. Shane, let me let me use Shane's language exactly. Listen to this, and it gives a stop of sorts. I think this is going to be a big trade when it comes, so I don't really want a stop of sorts. I want a big sticking out there. I'm right. And if it gets past here, I'm wrong. And at the moment, I don't really see that kind of stop. Does that make sense, Shane? I want a rock solid, yeah. I want one that just says, if it breaks this, buddy, it's over. Okay, Tim, do you find the clumping look a little funny? The open and close of those bars are awfully close together. I, I don't like, this is too, at first I'm pleased by this. And then the more I look at it, the more I'm not pleased. And I do see it sliding into the warning line, and I'm pleased by that. But it's got a funny smell to it. Something doesn't seem right. Now, it could just be that, you know, I'm getting back into the swing of things and I'm getting picky. But it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like what I'm looking for. I need something to turn a light bulb on. I'm not just going to put an order in because 2D hits 3D here. Does that make sense? Because that would look like this. And yeah, it's got it's a stop of sorts. But look. 
I'll make it I'll make it more obvious. I mean, I don't know what's happening down here and it's it is gentling a little, but then again, What's that do for you? So, the dock is to the horizontal. It might be Lewis, but I, I, I feel a little eh about this whole thing. So I'm going to watch. Let's see what let's see what shows up. I need something to flip the switch for me. I'm looking for a stop that looks like Miss America. Yeah, the Carlos. That's basically it. To be honest. It doesn't. It's it's got a lot of what I look for in an opportunity, but it doesn't feel like an opportunity to me yet. Does that make any sense to anybody? I mean, you've seen me take these kinds of trades, but this one doesn't. It, it, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm more clumping, and then, then you get this bar. You want to see the stop from across the room? Yep. So I see this bar. Then you, then you might start to second-guess yourself and say, well, yeah, look at the new buyers. So what are you worried about? 2D to 3D, fresh buyers. What, what exactly do you want? I don't know, but this isn't it. And a, a lot of people at this point would say, well, that was the opportunity. It's still within this range of thing, though. That's true. We are still within the control. We built this new controlling swing, and we're still in it, aren't we? So now we're at the prior highs. And, oh man, was that the opportunity? I don't think this is the opportunity, but maybe it is. So is this, is this the spiral? widening out and starting to turn or not so here we come into 2d 3d see it and let's see if this thing has any frequency at all if it doesn't have any frequency at this point I am going to just dump the damn meeting line and probably dump the screen and either redraw or move on to Canada. Okay? It's gnawing at my brain. Okay? And the weird thing is, it's not tugging at my emotions at all. I don't have any urge to jump in here at all. Okay? The part of me that says, ding 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 opportunity it's not even warming up but my brain is engaged and I'm watching everything and I'm trying to put it together so I kinda have usually it goes the other way around right it's become more intellectual challenge yeah so usually it's the other way around is the impulse part of you gets interested and then the brain has to slow everything down and make the connection in this case the brain is actually saying, well, what you got new buyers, you got clumping, you got this, you got that. But the part that, you know, gets me to engage is saying, I, uh, no, I, I don't feel it, dude. Slow down. So the market <clears throat> is throwing off lots of signals, but it, it's just not playing within me. So I'm not interested. I'm really not. Does it wear you out somewhat? If what, Ouija, the moment that I start to feel like it's wearing me out, I turn the screen off and walk out. Okay. Now, I'm kind of in lost world because you know we're we're, we're I I just drove four hours from Vegas to home. Um, and I and I wasn't breathing that well in Vegas. So I'm breathing better, and um. I'm trying to figure out something to do. And to be honest, the very first thing I did when I got home was I pulled out, uh, I think I told you guys I'm buying flugelhorns for the 
Prescott High School band and uh, I pulled out one of the flugelhorns that arrived while we were on vacation and I sat in my office and I was playing my flugelhorn. <laughs> God knows what that means. I'm watching this market playing a flugelhorn. It is good for the lungs, yeah. Absolutely. So I'm watch that's how I interested though. Did the cats listen? Yeah, they actually don't run. They I'm not I don't suck. I'm I have to tell you, it's intimidating for me to play next to my daughter. Because she's become that good. But that's okay. Yeah, it is awesome. So but I got a secret weapon that she doesn't know about. Yamaha makes a mute that makes your horn it's absolutely silent. You just you have, you have earbuds in, only you can hear the tone, and it's beautiful. It's pretty cool. Anyway, so I'm in here just kind of, you know, doodling around, but it just only the intellectual part of me is just in this chart. The trigger part of me is turned off for some weird reason. So, so let's see what happens to 2D, 3D. Well, that's pretty 2D, 3D, isn't it? This median line is about three days wide from A to warning line, and we're hitting it on the tick. More range of stuff and broadening spiral. Yep, it's 2D, 3D on top of pretty nice. Okay, so do you want to trade here, Weege? No. <laughs> and that's how I felt. I was intellectually interested, but not... Uh, I emotionally, emotionally interested. I'm not in love with this yet. Okay, so then we get this freaking bar. <laughs> I'm like, why don't you like this? The intellectual part of me is saying to the emotional part of me, why don't you like this? What's wrong with this? Because look at this bar. It gets right to 2D, 3D, then it closes on its eye. What's not to like, dude? And I really don't have an answer, except that I think the, the stop, I guess, is a little squirrelish. Maybe it's a little too horizontal for me or too rangy for me. I, I need a kick in the pants, I guess. I don't... Does anybody find this interesting? This area right here? Anybody going to answer? Come on. I'm more confused than ever. Okay. Looks like a range. Yes, 140.20. Okay. So Shane wants in. Seems like a nexus point. Chart looks interesting from the perspective of a whale. Okay. Part of the range. Forced pivot. Okay. All good things. Rangey still for me too. You know, I'll tell you how I feel, guys. squeezed the spikes seem to be fish making a bait bail okay oh the bait ball okay um i feel like like i said show me a stop that i can see from across the room everybody can see this stop down here right everybody in the world so it's not as I look at my first problem, it's right here, right? At 141.06. So, one, and again, this is not a corner trade. I could get the break even, and that's about where I could get. Honestly, I would have bought the second bar back based on the 2D, 3D contours of stop you just mentioned. Oh, David, nothing wrong with that. And, and as I said, especially... Not, I'm, I'm not suggesting anything about your account size, but especially if you have a smaller account, there were probably three or four trades in here that you guys probably should have taken and and ripped out your three three to one, right? But I'm smelling... Well, maybe this is the problem. I'm smelling something significant. And this doesn't look significant. So it's not only about a stop, but also who would be able to see it. Never expressed that before. I don't like the dumbo nature of this stop. This looks like if this gets broken, all bets are off. Right? I'm looking for a feeding frenzy. Um, 
Yeah, I'm look again. I'm looking for I, I, Carlos. Light me up. You understand what I mean? I don't think you're seeing the rotation that you like. It does not have your sly eye for rotation. Yeah, I don't. I don't see your feel rotation, and I don't. And uh, yeah, I think that's a good a good explanation, Scotty. I, I I just don't. I don't feel it. Even though it's got most of what I'm looking for, I don't I don't feel it. So we got 2D into 3D. Let's just move on. The hell with it. You ready? Uh, again, I could just go to Canada. Maybe I should should have just tricked you and just moved on to a Canada chart, but that would be cruel. So we start to pull out a little bit. And, you know, at this point, now we break the highs. I'm like, son of a, right? A Fed Funds futures chart. Yeah. Now we take out the highs. I'm like, okay, great, fine. Thank you. So am I just blind? Am I missing the whole thing? It's prime time New York. We're making new highs. I had 2D into 3D, my favorite setup. I had, I had a stop. I had everything I, you know, what didn't I have? I didn't have something that made me want to go, yeah, I'm in. So Carlos started out the session by saying sometimes you can't pull the trigger, right? Right? You guys sleeping for that part? <coughs> so for whatever reason, this did not make me pull the trigger. <coughs> I did not have an aha moment. That's right, Shane. But there was nothing wrong with this trade. And at this point, you're almost at 3 to 1, and you're, ba and you're at the lower parallel. So, you know, it's very close to, you know, rip out your money time. And that is rip out your money time. And we get up here and test in the top. So this would have been three to one. Definitely a trade you could have taken, ripped out your money. For whatever reason, the opportunity just didn't work for me. So let's see what we get now. Boxed in, box breaks. Note. We turn, maybe make a minor low right on, can you see this? Force pivot. Yes, forget to write it. See the force pivot right on the warning line that worked? 2D and 3D. Again, meeting line sometimes, the most important function is to give us information, right? But no stop. I get it. 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 Light's not on yet, is it? Just strong pivots. <coughs> now, if this ends up being A, and I'm looking for an upsloper, and all of this happened down here, and I could have gotten long down here, it, it's going to mean that I will have paid for information or for that light to get turned on with a higher price, right? But I'll do that every day and Sunday, as my dad used to say. If that's what it takes to get the light to turn on. I only trade when the light goes on. So those of you that trade um, and take so-so trades, eh, you know what, this isn't that great, but what the hell, I haven't had a trade this week. I don't do that. I'm going to wait for the light to come on. Whatever it takes. And as I said, you know, if it means I'm going to trade at a higher price, that's okay. As long as it, if I have better information, I'll take that trade every day. So we get a forced pivot on the warning line. Okay, cool. Dance along the median line. Okay. We leave a lower high. to do the retest it retest it looks like a pullback is due doesn't it now the, I've got an A and a B what's the slope of this median line 
upsloping. I've got to find what though? Okay, now I wasn't interested in this as a C. So again, I want something that I can see from across the room. Do you follow me? I'm looking for something special. I'm not looking for the everyday dumbbell lines that the world can see and trade along with me. Wash after a clump there? Maybe. So in the back of your mind, see if you can envision different things that might light me up or light you up. Okay? And we've worked on some of them in the last, I know it's been 10 days, but prior to that, the three, three or four sessions, we've worked on some of them. See if you can envision what else would light you up. What would it take? Okay? Here we go. Quadruple tops and close on our lows. So maybe we've got a pullback coming. Okay, we come down to this prior low, and maybe this was and we're going to call it this. Yeah. And that would make this, if we're right, that would make this well, let's make this funky color so that we and if this ends up being correct then we're going to call this of course a potential, you guys are ahead of me I'm always thinking ahead. I'm laying out another alternate pivot in case I need it to refresh frequency, right? Can always just not use it. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be connected to those three, but as we pull up, it's obvious that that's where the pivot probably should be. Or, or if we take out this low, we're probably coming down here again. Does that make sense? This is either the low and it's a higher low or we're coming back down here. And in which case actually if we come back down here I don't know that I want to play. Make sense? One time too many. At that point you know I, I think it probably won't make new lows but even if it doesn't it's just a big F and mess. So I don't really want to. So <clears throat> bottom, maybe a shoulder. So now what am I looking for? And, and Matt Cube got it already. What, am, what would I be looking for now? A strong reaction. That's right. So can you imagine a strong reaction over here somewhere, someplace? I don't know where it's going to come, but I do expect it's going to be higher, right? You mean the upside motion is stalled if it gets down there and you won't be interested. That's right, Ouija. <coughs> if we get right back down to those prior lows that I was unwilling to trade before, I don't, I'm not going to trade it now. The time to trade it was there. It's giving you the three to one. And if, if, if it come if we come right back down there, I I just don't think it's there. So we're going to be looking for a strong reaction, <clears throat> and I want two things. I want an easy stop that I can see across the room. Right? Makes sense? Because now I'm kind of in the middle of the range, right? Take a look. I'm in the middle of what's in on my screen. I'm in the middle of the range, basically, right? So I get it. Better be a stop that I like and a reason for it. Second of all, I need a reason to enter because I am in the middle. Does that make sense? 
I'm going to be a little queasy about entering the middle. I don't like entering the middle unless I have a reason. So this strong reaction better be interesting, not just, you know, we're fluttering around because that's forcing an entry. That's, I didn't take this one. Let me get in over here because, just because. Do you understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> Matt Cube says, definitely, I'm liking this logic because I get confused in the middle where there's no man's land. Yeah, so light me up or I'm not interested. Give me a good stop or I'm not interested. And the stop better make sense because I'm in the middle. And I don't really like to play in the middle very often, so it better make sense. I'm asking for a lot. I get it. But let me ask you a question. When you're putting money on the line, shouldn't you always be asking for a lot? Ouija says, I think trading in the middle demands a lot more. I would absolutely agree. So let's see if I can find something that lights me up and lights you up. You ready? Now it is noon on Friday. And we bust our maximum excursion line. And oh man, it's like, really? Is this thing going to make new highs and just take off without me? Oh, oh, by the way, wait, wait. All right, we pop this line. I can obviously do this. So here's my smaller median line, not my inside median line, but my smaller median line. All right. So as we pop higher, it's like, really, are you just going to take off without me? After all this, after all I've done for you, are you just going to take off without me? And we're near the highs. We break the highs. We make a new high. And we've gone to, now we've made the median line. And we are getting movement, but as you know, we're at the high, so we're at 2D high, and we're at the median line. So, has this median line? I thought I discovered something, but has this median line done its job? Correct? Follow me? Or are we going to zoom and keep right on going, and there's not going to be any entry? All those things running through my mind, and just so you know, it's just bonds are just about to close Friday, it's Friday at 3 30. Okay, on our highs, on our highs, and I think that's the last tick. We'll see. Yeah, there's the last tick. We make a high, close on our low, end of day. Everybody with me? So, I've got my median line, it's buried in the middle, and I'm kind of feeling like, can you imagine, in the, let me ask you this question, can you imagine in the next five bars, a setup to get long? I'm going to put my glasses back on. My cube says, don't see it. Anybody else? Anything is, no, I didn't ask you if it's possible. I asked you, can you imagine it? Can you see it? Okay, tell, tell me what it is, if you can imagine it. On top of the maximum excursion line. Okay. A go, no go? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, somebody saying this. So switch back here. Okay. Overshoot, undershoot below the lower H and stop above below the force pivot. Okay. 
the second shoulder to the left where it meets a 3D lower parallel. Okay. So you got some you got some spots in your mind, right? Now, as as what's the right word? As messy as this looks right now, I'm more interested now than I was when we were flat when the spiral was in the flat section down here. Does that make any sense? It was stagnant down here and wasn't giving me any indication that it was going to get off the mat. Now at least the spiral has broadened out and now it's turned up and I know it, and I know it's expanding. Does that make sense? So if it's broadened out and expanding and I'm now moving up and it's expanding I can expect what? No, not a pullback. Continued expansion to the upside because that's the, or flowering, because that's where we are. Right? It's a larger spiral. Okay? All I got to do is find something that lights me up which you know sometimes that proves to be elusive all right so are we ready here's our grown go I'll just park it over here I'm actually gonna open it up some more I don't need anything more than that actually I don't even more need more than that I'll just do that how's that are we good? So my strong reaction down here looks like at best there, right? And I think if we take out this low, all bets are off. And I'm probably not going to trade at all. I'm probably going to page over to Canada. Okay. So, let's see what we get. And, well, I'll ask, this, I'll ask the question in a minute. No, but I guess that's the last bar. No, still, still got a bar. There we go. That's Sunday. Whoops. Why does the strong reaction have to be so high? Um, lower parallel. It doesn't have to be. It could be equidistant to C, I guess, but... It's not going to, I mean, it could be here. Sure. Okay, here's Sunday. We gap open. See it? Nice, big, fat, juicy gap. Okay, so... It looks to me like everything that everybody imagined is now out the window, right? And Sunday night, fresh buyers are chasing. I didn't imagine the gap that high, did you? And then a run-up. But we've just gone from 12 o'clock in the afternoon to Sunday night. We've just gone a whole... You going up, darling? Okay. Um, we've just gone a whole thousand dollars a contract. Okay? That's range extension. Can I open it up some more? See, I don't need to see this because if this get, for me, if this gets taken out, it's meaningless, right? So I can bury that over there. Do you see how I use less and less bars? I only want to know what's relevant. Does that make sense? There, there's no point in looking at all that other crap. I don't care what the, the low was two days ago, even though most of you got it in your screen. I just want to know what's relevant. This is all that's relevant. This low 
and now we're looking for a top. We are now making up, if you will, what? Come on. I know it's too, too deep into the eyes, but what else? What are we creating? We're looking for a top, and what are we creating then? New controlling swing. Thank you. So I don't need the other one, do I? It's gone. Meaningless. So why, why even bother to have it on the screen? Just a waste of your time. All right, so let's watch. Make a high. Don't follow through really don't follow through so now I've got a gap sitting in front of us and if you think back to the last three sessions that we did before I headed out to uh, Sin City is that Vegas is Vegas Sin City yeah whatever um, not where Shane lives but anyway um, you know we did some work with gaps didn't we Starting to see the strong reaction possibility. Yes, when to lean on them and when not to lean on them. Okay, so now that you've seen the gap, I'll ask you the question again. Can you imagine a trade possibility? And what would it be? Yes, using the gap as a stop. Yes, by the gap, stop under it. Anybody else? Middle of the gap. Okay, anybody else? Turn at the green median line or at the lower parallel. Uh, not in my vocabulary. Okay. Top of the back with stop at the bottom of the gap. Okay. Anybody else? Here's what I think. Fresh buyers, if the gap holds, look for a shoulder reactionary. Okay. Fresh buyers not only gapped it higher, but, you know, took it uh, 700 bucks higher per contract. The question here on the board is the quality of this bottom. Let me see the wind change and then stop below the middle of the gap. Well, okay. See, I'm, I'm getting confirmation talk again. Let me see this. If the gap holds, okay. If we're right about this, I don't think it's going to be a, oh, now I can see the wind change and now let me get in. I think it's going to be a, this is worth spending a stop on or it's not generally that's what you're going to see with gaps so I know one's going to come up but let's just put one in so let's think about what we have to spend we're on a shopping spree Gina and it looks like this Okay, so you could do this if you want, but doing this doesn't give you a stop, does it? Buying the bottom of the gap does not give you a stop, does it? Yes, no. The only way you're going to find a stop here quickly, would you like that gap for a stop, though? Yeah, no. Well, hang on, Thomas. The only way you're going to remember, gaps are this is a pivot, this is a pivot, right? This is a pivot, this is a pivot. So the only way you're actually going to find a stop is either you could, you could do this, You could even buy inside the gap and just say, if, you know, uh, I, you, you could work this gap over. But otherwise, 
there's no opportunity for a stop at all because look at look at the nature of price here and if I put my gonna go it just it doesn't go anywhere does that make sense Thomas do you mean that if it gets to the bottom of the gap there you don't want to trade no 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 I'm just talking about I'm just talking about stops Ouija if I buy the bottom of the gap I don't have a stop this is the only pivot this is the only swing I have right here this is a swing this is a swing okay I if I buy this my next swing is all the way down here right yes or no you mean you don't have to spend that much below the low gap pivot that's not what I mean okay swing highs swing lows we want our stop to be above or below a swing high or swing low right market structure there's going to be two types of people well there's going to be three types of people with these gaps there's going to be a people that go it's a gap ooh I don't want to play with this okay nothing wrong with that it's your money you don't want to deal with gaps just don't deal with them there's going to be people that go I read Thomas Bulkowski's book and gaps get filled X amount of time so I'm gonna get short to fill the gap or I'm you know right gaps always get filled so that's what I'm shooting for right how many people have heard that okay then there's okay then there's people that pay attention to market structure and the way dr. Anderson not Andrews Andrews did say they were both pivots but dr. Anderson counted them you know, what, what he said was this is a swing high this is a swing low or vice versa depending on what you need okay and some people play gaps this way if I get to fill the gap I'm gonna actually buy here people just don't talk about those traders much but there are plenty of people that buy at bottoms of gaps right so you are looking for a stop that everyone can see I get it says man okay so let's see what I'm looking for as price swings down the first thing I'm asking myself is what's the quality of the bottom here the quality of the bottom is entirely dependent on how this gap plays out isn't it if this gap holds this is a great bottom if this gap gets blown shit city right pardon my language nothing in between so now you have to decide for yourself Matt says that's a nice stop then you have to decide for yourself is this worth a ticks okay now all the big fat juicy moves that I've seen since I started watching on the 7th have been to the upside we started at 139 okay we've been all the way up to 142 so it's we work we zoom up then we work our way lower then we zoom up then we work our way lower okay so that's been the rhythm of this market so the question is quality to bottom are you willing to place one stop on this gap or not together with the juicy $700 move in one bar uh, the eight ticks is worth it says Lewis okay anybody else Matt says I'm in I would anybody else David says I'm in yes says Jeff anybody not like it Scotty you want to see the wind shift first Ouija says I'm on the fence okay thank you 
Bring out your dissenters right now. Come on. If you're on the fence or you don't like it, I want to hear it. I'm fine with that. I want to hear what, why, how. No, I'll play. Let's put the stop in. On the fence. It's either a Sunday night wash or a big move higher. Okay? Fence sitter today. Okay, John says it's either a Sunday night wash or a big move higher. John, would you play? Or do you just want to see it play out first? Jean is not going shopping. Okay, so John says, it's interesting, but I'm not in tune with the market. Then you should just sit it out, John. I agree. Are there any other reasons that the gap should hold? Only, only this, Thomas. I'll say this again. All the big, fat, juicy moves up, or all the big, fat, move, juicy moves have been to the upside, and the pullbacks have been relatively mild. They've been boring, but they've been relatively mild. They've gone from 139 to 142 with only minor pullbacks. And none of them have been particularly interesting to buy, yet they've spurted to major moves. I got you, Gina. So other than that, the answer to Thomas is no. There's not any other reason that the gap should hold. This would be tape reading and be intimate with the market. I see what you mean, says Ouija. Yes, I would. That Yes. And that's, that's why I want to work it over today. This is tape reading. This is 100% tape reading. I might have seen this trade, but I wouldn't have had my order on the line. Wouldn't have seen... Well, you haven't seen my order yet. That's not my order, Matt. Sorry. That ain't my order. You'll see my, When you see my order, it'll pop up. Okay? But this is tape reading. You're exactly right, Weezy. And we've been working on tape, tape reading, okay? And this is a... <clears throat> when we were doing just um, market the market map sessions or midday sessions, we've kind of stayed away from this part of trading. For tape readers, this is um, kind of tape reading 101. Would you say it took three days of tape reading to arrive at this conclusion? Yes, I would. I would say, Ouija, it took three days of, I want to get long, no, this doesn't work. I want to get long, no, this doesn't work. I want to get long, no, this doesn't work. Shit, I just gave away three big figures. Why didn't it work? Now I have an event. How's that, Ouija? And I'm not afraid of events. Ouija says that makes more sense now. So events don't rattle me. Been there, dealt with them, and I've seen how people deal with these. So, yeah, it's not a, it, it's not a worrisome thing for me. So, all right, so let's see what we get. I'm just waking up right now, Monday morning. Uh, you'll see what that means in a minute. So here we are testing the top of the gap. Everybody with me? So it's now 4.45. I've had a couple things of green tea, scratching my head. The chasers are absolutely getting punished by London, right? Absolutely. And they're about to start in about 17 minutes they're about to start calling the guys in London and punish them as well right that's just how this game goes but once you learn the rhythm it's okay it's just that most people don't know the rhythm and they certainly are not going to teach you if they do know okay so I'm watching this and I'm asking this question right here quality of the bottom and everything is dependent on the area marked out right here everything the whole ball of, of wax comes right down to this that's the quality of the bottom right after all this 
shaking and baking and three days of pushing and shoving it all comes down to those uh, looks like four ticks not much right can you imagine a trade <clears throat> I don't have my orders in yet, but I'm contemplating them. I'm drinking my tea, and I'm saying, okay, what what do I want to do as this bar is closing? Okay, here we go. Okay, tries to get into the gap, does not get into the gap. See it? Come on, are you there? That's my limit. Your bottom is improved for you? Okay. Tries to get into the bottom. Doesn't get into the bottom. Double bottoms. Okay. Tries to get in the bottom. Can't get into the bottom. So test, 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 test. Now, two things are going through my head. This is starting to look good, right? The top of the gap, so to speak. But that's pretty obvious to everybody. With me? Now, I could just do this. Opens and closes are squeezing closer and closer together. That's true. Okay, I could do that, but this is obvious to me. And in this case, it may not make it make much of a difference because the line of death is really only four ticks wide, right? But imagine if this was a twenty tick gap; it would make quite a difference. So they're pounding, 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 trying to close this gap. And I say, you know what? So now watch this. We open on a low, try it and go higher, close on our low. High frequency, lot, lots and lots of 1,444 ticks go into one tick wide bar. See it? And it's prime New York. Okay, it's as hot as bonds get. So here's my thinking. And again, it's in a certain sense it's the same trade but that's only because this is only four ticks wide you follow me imagine this ten ticks wide then it makes a difference yeah the Brits are yeah bending them over yes they're taking yeah so I think they'll pop these lows Is this bar telling you it's now or never? This bar is telling me that they're about to do something. And Ouija, it's one of two things. It's either going to spurt higher and I'm, I missed it. Or I think they're going to, what I really think is, I think they're going to shag these lows. The stops right under these lows. I think they're going to run these lows. I don't think the gap's going to get filled. But even if it does, I don't think it's going very far. Yeah? Total price compression. Yeah, I like that, Gina. Questions? And do you see what I'm doing? <coughs> this is tape reading. And again, it would be more significant if this gap was 10 points wide. So, But you'll just have to remember it the next time you see a wider gap. Because it, if you had to stretch for your stop, the answer is you want to be cheap, right? You don't want to buy up here. You want to let them run the stop. Everybody understand the the thoughts here let them chase then get chased out then get long 
Remember, markets go up when everybody that's long gets washed out. That's when the market turns around and goes up. So, yeah, it could do one of two things. It's either going to spurt up higher here, or they're going to wash people, and then it's going to go. I get what you mean. You can tell what the next bar looks like. Yeah, I, I can see the next bar, Ouija. Now, I can be wrong, but I really... Now I can finally... Before, on all the pullbacks, I couldn't see the next bar. Now I can see the bar. Do you guys understand the difference between this and the other two or three pullbacks? For me, at least. I can see it. I can taste it. I can touch it now. I can put my hands around it. I can see the next bar. I can see the bars after that. It's almost like I've shifted in... This is a lot more fun. Yeah, it's like I I know where it's going to print. I, I've shifted forward in time and space, and I'm watching everybody else scratching their head trying to figure out what to do now. All right, so let's see what happens. Filled on the wash. You buy all you wanted at 19. Believe me. Tens of thousands. And then... It closes, the bar closes higher, mysteriously. Why? Because everybody that had to sell, sold. All these guys that chased up here and up here started to sell, continued to sell, a little bit of buying here, high frequency push and shove, and then the final people got washed out. Make sense? Now it's free to swing. So the spiral looks like this. Flattened, and now it's heading up. Is that move big enough for a wash? In bonds, yes. In currencies, no. John, it, in, if, you watch the, if you actually watch the bonds and watch volume, and again, I, I know the volume, I've told you volume is fake-ish, but take a, look at, take a look at what's on the bids and the offers. Sometimes it'd be 40, 50, 60,000 contracts on the bids and offers. Now, some of them are spoof, no doubt about it. But I can tell you, I can trade 30,000 contracts at 19 in this market. The, and some guy will hit me. That's how big this market is. So the wash, a tick or two in this market can wash out everybody because the guys that are the, the guys that are providing liquidity so to speak they, they think they're still standing in the pits they're trying to catch two pips or three pips on 10,000 contracts literally do you hear me they take their entire wad and they'll buy or sell 20,000 contracts to try and make two pips two ticks now they are big ticks but still it's a bit crazy as far as I'm concerned okay so yeah that is a wash in bonds so you'll have to you would have to imagine this expanded to look at it as a currency or whatever okay but same principle so when you look at the video just imagine that the scale is different and instead of this being four ticks it's ten ticks and this wash instead of being Let's take a look. 21 down to... So instead of being 3 ticks, it's 8 or 9 ticks. Or in terms of currencies, it's 8 pips. Okay? And that's big enough for a wash. Alright? So let's see what happens. So we're in... Let's go back to what we were talking about before in trades. There's three portions to the trade. What are they? Entry, management, exit. Thank you, John. So, we're oh, even better. Entry, management, end game. Yes, absolutely. And entry, money, management, end game. Even better, Jeff. Thank you. Okay, everybody get it? Please. If you haven't typed it in, please type it in so we can myelinate. We've been away for 10 days. Entry, money management, end game.
It's not a stupid game. Do the whole thing. It's not a stupid game. But I make my kids at Stanford do it. Okay? Stanford Graduate School. MIT Graduate School. It works. Joey makes me do it at the gym. It works. Okay. Paul says, I would get long at the next bar at the blue dash line. Entry management. Okay. The next bar, you don't see a retest in terms of tape reading. Um... Um, the answer, Ouija, is I don't see. I don't see the reason to take the risk. But if this bar printed, and I wasn't in, I would definitely have my bid in either at the dash blue line or here, at what is the median line in my green, right? So, if you wanted to wait for confirmation, you might get it and you might not. I don't see the reason. But you could do it, yeah. I, it, it's more, it's more, it's more aggressive. But this thing's lit me up. I, you know, if I could see the next bar, and this is exactly what I saw, wash them out, close higher. I'm more. Any time that I feel I can see the next bar, I'm willing to put a stop on the line if the stop makes sense. It's got to be a stop that I can see from across the room, and this stop I can see from across the room. Fill, if they fill the gap and make any headway, I want out. Okay, so I'm more I'm more than satisfied with the stop, and I can imagine that next bar and it fits perfectly with the gap. Make sense? But if you want to wait for the next bar, I'm fine with that as well. So if you want a little bit of confirmation, let's see if you could have gotten long here. Let's see if you could have gotten long here. Okay, we ready? All right, and uh, Paul's looking for the dotted blue line. Here we go. Paul, you are the luckiest guy in the world because they actually filled you at the tick. Now, the interesting thing about bonds is you get filled a lot on the lows and on the highs because so much goes through. Okay. Now, if you're doing 10,000 or 20,000, you might not get all of them, but you do get a lot of fills at the highs and the lows. So, because the algorithm, no matter what they tell you, is facilitation of volume and trade, meaning they want everybody to participate. It's not first in, first out. Okay. All right. So, Paul's long. I'm long. Ouija, would you have gotten long in here somewhere? Or too weird for you? The blue dot. Okay, Ouija's long. How mu who would not have been interested? That's okay with me. I just want. I'm just curious. I know it's kind of a. Eh. This either works for you or it doesn't. Everybody's in. I'd want to get in after that dip into the gap. So, Gina, would you get in where Ouija and Paul got in right here? Okay. So, that's some, a good confirmation for some people. Okay. All right. Now, what phase of the trade are we in? Okay. Money management. John's got it. Now, if we're in money management, <coughs> John's are, you're way ahead of me, John. John says, I want B he, BE when the high is taken out. Okay. Well, we need something else, John. Looking to our target and our stop. Yep. Well, we know our stop. What about our target? Double the range from A. Three to one or greater. That's not an answer, man. That's a condition, but it's not an answer. I'm not just going to throw a limit order at three to one. And if I catch you guys doing it, I'm going to spank your ass. 
I see too many people doing that. We're not selling at three to one. Time to draw a fork. Okay. How about that big old blue median line? How about it? I'm going to squeeze in just a second because I want to show you a line that I told you I'd tell you about later. Okay. So I grab the shoulder. See it? And the impulse off the shoulder. How far did we run off the shoulder? That make any sense? And then I just stacked it on top. I think this gap could be the center of the move higher. There you go. If you wanted to be less aggressive, you could go from the shoulder to the gap and then double it out, but that's going to get you out in this area. I think it's got more in it. But I could be wrong. So ultimately, I want to catch... Remember, I've said this before, if you catch 70 or 80% of a large move, you're doing magnificent. Have you heard me say that? Because you got to get in and you got to get out, right? And I don't, just like Amos said, I don't want to pick the top when I sell. I don't want to pick the bottom if I'm short to get out. I want to get out. I want to make sure I'm out. Does that make sense? So it's a little bit like a maximum excursion. Yeah, this is yeah, this is exactly what this is. This line tells me this is the this is the max you should expect from this trade is double this. Okay. Make sense? So, as a tape reader, I'm going to be thinking that as this thing explodes, it's probably going to run out of rocket fuel as it gets near the end of this second magenta line. And I probably don't want to be holding for that. Even if I can box in profits, if we, get, if we start to get up there, the gap has a life. Yeah, it's got a half-life, John. And so as it, you know, burns out of fuel, I want to be gone before it burns out of fuel. Does that make sense? So do you think I'm going to put my limit cell at the top of the magenta line? Okay, so I'll be looking at other clues. That's my ultimate target. And I can use it to look at risk reward, but let's be honest, I don't even have to do the risk reward dance because let's just do this. I'm already at three to one, okay? And I have barely even gotten into the magenta. So all I have to do is A, box in, and B, look for a logical place to take profits that's relatively near the top end of the magenta, maybe 80% of it or something like that. Make sense? I don't want to be a pig, I just want my money. I want to get in, get out, nobody gets hurt. I want an end game. So now, can you imagine the end game? Okay, so the end game is 80% of the magenta or something like that, and then we'll, you, we'll try and find something logical that will help us exit. Oh, make sense? Okay, now what's the money management part? What's the first part of money management? Well, first, no, before BE. First part of money management, what is it? No, it's not risk word. Come on. Hi, right, Abdul, how are you? Initial stop, yes. Second problem is, where's the first problem? Yep. Preservation of the capital should always be on your mind. You're exactly right. So first problem should be your second thing. Preservation of the capital should be in the back of your mind. The next problem should be BE. Where do I go to BE? Now, that may be different for you or me or Petra or Abdu, all right? But that's on your mind, right? Make sense? So let's look. 
let's just stack them up and look. There's one. There's two. And that's at prior highs. Looks to me like as we get not only to prior highs, but also to this lower parallel, this is not a bad area to be thinking about BE. What do you think? No? Okay, can you imagine that? That's the earliest area to think about. It. I agree, Ouija. You you can you could be slower, but if you're looking for a logical place, and especially if you have a small account, that is that's a pretty good looking place to say, okay, you know what? If this thing's not gonna take off, just let me out. This is the part why while I don't trade like this. I'm going to tell you something that I don't talk about often, but, you know, Amos is famous for saying, you know, keep the cheese, just let me out of the trap. And that's what we'd be doing here, right? Okay, it's not going to take off, just let me out. Get it? Okay, but the other thing that he would do which I don't do and I don't espouse. I do not suggest. This is your first problem and it's a big problem, right? Okay. Amos would have half of his position on wherever he would put it on. If you break the first problem, he would add to his position. Now, there are times that I add to my position, but it's very, very seldom. When any time I add, by how much you double up, Thomas? But I'm, tell, I'm telling you, remember, he was trading dailies, weeklies, and monthlies. I'm telling you, it's not a game you want to play. It really, well, it can corrupt your risk-reward, but that depends on how far a way that you, you can't do it when the initial problem is only two stops away yeah that's a completely different art okay I'm just I'm just passing on a piece of knowledge to you okay you'd have to be at four or five to one at the first problem before you think about adding okay so that you'd still kept your risk reward at three to one now any time that I add so for, for example last year those two huge oil, um, sorry, gold trades. When I when I added, they each had their own stop. They all had their own minimum three to one risk reward, et cetera, et cetera. They all had their own entry, money management, and end game. Make sense? And it, it, so, in a sense, they were individual trades. But I very seldom do that, and that was more a function of trying to move a large amount of money. Do you want to be at break even at the first trade before you add? Uh, yeah, but I but I just want John, in the last four years I've probably added the trades three times out of all the trades I make. So I basically don't. It's like a risk management more than trying to maximize reward, am I right? Um, for him, um, no because I Ouija I'll, I'll, I guarantee I'll show you on another trade that has bigger risk reward before before you go to break even because again he's the risk reward king. Yes, he is always portfolio trading. Well, he's campaign trading. He's not portfolio trading in the sense that he's going to hold 27 trades. Okay, he's he's pretty much a one trick pony in the sense that when he's going after one thing, John, he's going to put 25% of his money on one thing and that's all he's gonna do is that one thing so it's a different game that we teach and trade here but I just thought I'd mention it for those of you that are gonna start delving into more um, I'm gonna be writing more and more Shane I guess has promised that I would be writing more and more articles and one of the things I'll be writing about is exactly what Amos did and contrast it with how I no longer I don't agree with everything he's did I don't agree with everything Anders did either Everybody's different, okay? 
Anyway, just a thought about <clears throat> break even. You only do it to push markets over the cliff to be in control of the outcome. That's correct, Lewis. That's the only time I had. Let me read what Lewis said again. I only do it to push the market over the cliff to be in control of the outcome. That is true, Lewis. Okay, so <clears throat> I would suggest this is not a bad logical area to think about break even. You don't have to. You can stay here. But if you're looking for something that makes sense, you're at the switchback of the blue. We've got a forced pivot off this warning line. This warning line also gave us the low down below. We didn't want to buy it, but I didn't want to buy it. But So the frequency of this blue is working pretty good. I don't want to take profits here. It's only two to one, but if it's going to stop and turn there, it's not a bad place to say, okay, no more. Okay, so let's see what we get. You guys ready? And again, I just gave you a piece of knowledge. I don't want to see everybody go out and start adding to positions, okay? I do want to be able to tell you things and teach you things. And you are big boys and big girls, but I do expect you to think about it and turn it around in your hands and decide whether or not it makes sense. And if you end up using it, I expect you to practice first. Personally, I don't use it. I don't think it makes sense. I don't like to pollute my entry price. I have average up before and it almost never works out, but it's not the same as averaging down, which is Ebola deadly. That's that yeah, double up and throw up is what my one of my old managers used to say and he was a wise young man. All right, so here we go. That was George Egan. All right, so now we're at the upper parallel of the green, and we're sprinting. Are we in the looking for the top mode right now? No. We have a top right right over here we're in the what's what's the quality of the top what's the quality of the bottom mode okay make sense okay <coughs> still boxed in should be a break even now right or at least considering it you get about two and a half to one. Nice trade. Can't let it turn into a loser. Okay. We're at the lower parallel. And we're at the prior highs. So we've got two D double tops going. Let's see if the market steps up. Do you see the mode change? This is money management. This is the first thing that should be coming to mind. Okay, we switched from what's the quality of the bottom. Now I know the quality of the bottom. And I don't have a top anymore, do I? Which is good because we're what? A myelinate. What's our position? So if we're long, looking for a top is a good thing, right? Do you follow the logic? All right, so this is the money management phase. We've got an end game sitting up there. See it? Seems like forever, doesn't it? But that's okay. <coughs> Next bar. Look at them uptick. Ooh, doggies. So, 
<clears throat> this wasn't drawn, wasn't drawn very well, but actually I need to do this. Need to fix this one second. <clears throat> Look at the close on the low. See it? Yep, we're speeding at 80%. Absolutely. We didn't even, God, we didn't even blink here, did we? I, I guess we did retest, but I mean, not much of a pause. Now, we close on our low, so I throw out the maximum exertion line just because. Take a measurement, okay? I got the Doppler radar out there taking a measurement. Nothing else. It's not resistance. Everybody follow me? This is not resistance. I'm just taking a look at the velocity, the speed, the acceleration, however you want to talk about it, of this market. Okay? Because right now we're going vertical, aren't we? So we'll probably have a pullback, and if we have a pullback when we take off again, I want to know the speed and the acceleration relative to this one. All right, I could have measured this one and then measured it against this one. Okay, so if we pull back, I'm going to want to do the same thing and then compare the two. Does that make sense? Why do I want to compare the two? <coughs> Yes, why, but why do I want to compare the two? Tell when it's slowing down, which was part of our plan. That's right, Matt Cubed. To know whether it's slowing or not, because that's part of endgame, isn't it? If it's slowing down and I've made enough progress, I better be looking for a logical way out. Does that make sense? That's endgame. Okay. It's like hot potato. I don't want to be left holding this if it's going to turn. Now, look, I've already got 19, I've already got $1,000 a contract in this trade. Wouldn't y'all like $1,000 a contract? I don't think it's over yet, but, okay. That's the kind of market this bond market is right now, which is why I'm willing to be slow to enter because I want a quality entry because then I think the money management endgame will give me a nice, fat, juicy profit. Okay? So I'm, I'm willing to pass up a few that are just so-so. Does everybody follow that? All right. Next part. Okay. Okay. See you on the tape, Paul. Take care. Have a good weekend. There's our pullback. See it? Now, I don't, maybe, I, maybe it's a one bar pullback. I don't know, but we'll see. I guess not. So, looking for a top. Have we found a top? Not yet. Don't know. Doesn't mean we can't box at some point, but you know, in in the big picture, have we found a top? Don't know. Now we test the area where price took off. And break through it. So And there's there's no way to get to this as a profit target, okay? So or that I know of, you can find one, you can let me know, but that's fine. I don't really care because I think it's got significantly more in it. But this is our pullback phase, right? So we went to at least three to one. We need to be at least break even. And yes, John says we need a higher low. That's exactly right. This low needs to be higher. And I know it's painful to watch it pull back, but we need it to pull back. Why? Yeah, both. 
to spiral higher and to box in. That's right. To find buyers so that it can go back up. Yep. To form a stop so we can box it in. But I like this thought, which we just gave, which is find buyers so they can go up. Think about that. We need people to get out of their positions, right? Damn, it's coming off. Let me get out of my position. The people that managed to get long up in here, see, we got long down here when everybody was puking. They started to get it here, and when it took out this eye, they really got it. Now, all that profit's gone, and they're puking again, just like a rolling chop, right? We need this to happen because when it turns, if it does turn, if we're right and it leaves a higher low, when it turns, those people are going to be our buyers. Make sense? It's just the rhythm of the market. It's the way it works. So I know it's uncomfortable. We're back to the median line now. Through the median line, people are, you know, chewing on their fingernails. I get it. Sorry, we're at the upper parallel. Now we're at the median line. And we turn... And that's probably about as much as you can stand, right? At that point, you're got, you, you know, your fingers are tapping, you're whatever, whatever nervous ticks you got. All right, so now it turns up, then you get this bar. Praise Jesus. <laughs> we'll convert you yet, man. All right. And a high activity bar. Went from an illiquid bar to a high activity bar. Wide range bar closes in its lower third. I don't really want to see a lower high, do I? What would make this a lower high? Can anybody tell me? Which low? Last low. Thank you. So, this is what you should be thinking. That makes sense? Otherwise, we're in trouble. And similarly, Make sense? If you think that has to hold, can you move stop before we make new highs? Yeah, you can. Sure. I probably wouldn't until I see this bar. Or maybe this bar. Okay, if you get nervous on this bar, you could absolutely move here. So I'd go... Uh, Again, that's it's personal style, but this is money management, and you got to deal with it. It's part of money management and, in a weird way, end game. That's the biggest. You could go to three as well, right? Well, you could go to three pips if you want, Matt. Three to five pips is the rule. So if you want to do that, remember these are big, big ticks. Thirty-one and a quarter. It's not much difference. I get it. But just for the learning phase, each spiral is different. Let's say that we were pulling back and this was significantly different than break even. Yes, 
if you say this this is this is the higher low and it better hold this is a logical area to snug up to right and if you've got a fair amount of money on the table you may not want to wait for this to get taken out maybe you can't wait maybe this box is too big okay it's just learning about boxes that we're talking about here today all right okay so let's see what the spiral has in, ho in store for us pull back but close on our high shit close on our low it's like oh no really more action but we close on our high and we're awful close to that low close on our low but a little bit higher they're going to sweat us aren't they now let me ask you a question got awful quiet there for a minute can anybody feel yes but seen this range of stuff before blasting hard can, yeah could you feel the guys that miss the move higher that are a little smarter than the average bear can you feel them in here sniffing around No, yes. Okay, well, you need to work on it. This is tape reading. Okay, they know that this is an important area. And if they can snag some relatively close to here, for them, that's, okay, that's big deal. This is very tactical for them. They missed the first part, which we caught. Now they're trying to get theirs. Okay, and then the guys that didn't get enough or didn't get any here get it now, and now they're, you know, let me just see if I can squeeze in a little more. And if you look on a 3D basis, take a look. Are you looking? On a 3D basis, they're buying the same low, aren't they? Now most of them don't know it, but they're buying 3D triple bottoms. That's right. Make sense? So just because I can't I can't get through a whole session without doing it, for a while it feels like a 3D coil. Yeah, it is a 3D coil. One, two, three drives to the bottom. The blast off was one, two. We're looking for the third to the top. Yeah? Just as a counting mechanism. That's all. 2D range into 3D range. Yeah, I like that. And a 3D range is sloped, and it's sloped which way here? Up. And up works for us, doesn't it? So just as I was really patient about the entry, I'll be really patient during the money management phase as long as it doesn't blow out my markers like this or break even, right? Because I think there's lots of money to be made here. All right, let's see what we get. Feeling a little better. Those of you that had acid stomach, now are you feeling better? Okay, so that we did not leave a lower high well yet and we um, I, when we take this out I'm pretty sure we're not going to and we left another higher low by the way so now I've got three higher lows and now I've got a new high we do close on its low but we've got a new high high yeah Now, I'm not wild about that close. 2D, yes. I'm not wild about that close. And the first thing that comes to mind to me is the same thing Matt just said, which is it's a 2D high, but it's far from being a 3D, right?
And if I want this thing to get up and get going, because that measuring is a long ways away, I need it to start to accelerate again. Oh, and what mode are we in suddenly? Looking for a top. So, rewind back to this. I'm going to draw this because as we look for a top, when we pause the next time, are you paying attention? When we pause the next time, I'm immediately going to take the temperature or the speed of whatever this slope is to find out if we're accelerating or decelerating. Yeah? If we're decelerating, I'm immediately going to look to the logic of this market. If we're accelerating, I probably have a little more time. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Here's our median line. Let me show you where we're at. Here's the top top. Let me put a <sighs> there's the ultimate gotcha. All right, there's our measurement. See it? One forty three ten. Everybody with me? We're close to the median line. See it? Unsure what you mean by logic to look to logic of market if deceleration. Okay, Gina. Okay, if the if if I take a measurement and price is decelerating, then I want to look at other things rather than just saying, you know what, no matter what, my order's at one forty three oh nine or ten. I'm now within 80% of that whole thing. I'm going to say, well, maybe price will run out the median line. Or maybe it'll run out at my maximum excursion line. See? So I'll move to a secondary measurement. Look for other bearing. Yes. Yes. Does that make sense to everybody? Plan B. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Do you have limit sell at the purple or watch how price reacts there? Um, right, right now I'm working a limit, but if I'm if I get the sense that it's decelerating, I'm going to look at I'm going to look for Plan B, John. Does that make sense? I always have. Let me just say this to everybody: I always have a stop in the market, and I always have a profit in the market. Does that make sense? No. It, if I think it's decelerating or slowing down, then I'll go to plan B, right? So I, I always have that limit order in. At the very beginning, I measure it and put that limit order in in case, you know, somebody hit me with the profit stick. That's fine with me. Come and get me. And this one is 2D anyway. It's not moving. So throw it up there. Which bar will one use to measure? How much? Well, okay, watch. Let's watch, let's watch it unfold, Lewis. I haven't drawn it yet. Now watch. We're making, we're still looking for a top, right? You met, if price accelerates, do you pull the limit order? No. I've made my decision, John. The most I'm going to take out of this trade is 143.09. Period. Okay? That's it. That's end game for me. And I'll be happy if I get 80% of that. Okay? All right. Lewis, you watching? Okay. You see the hesitation and the wind shift? Uh, what did I do? 
I hate that. Hang on. No, don't say that. Uh, this was uh, 1444. What? Alright, hang on. Um, uh, take your screen off one second. Do, 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 do. If the lines are gone, I'm going to be angry. I don't think they are. Oh, they're there. Okay. Hang on. It's amazing how much trouble you can get with just by hitting one little click. Almost there. screen again yeah yes the cats did something on my keyboard Lewis thank you all right you do have a screen you're good all right so this should say I don't know what I did by the way um, wind shift feel it sliding parallel in the purple mm, maybe okay Okay, it, I don't, yeah, I don't care if it's a big move or if it's just a tiny pause, but can you see the pause? Okay, it's the first pause I've got, right, after the move back up. Does everybody understand that? Do you see a pause anywhere else in here? Okay, so when I get the first pause, Lewis, I go from the prior high to this high, and I draw in, I'll make it thicker so it's easier to see. And I, I made them two colored because I, I was trying to, here's the prior maximum excursion line, here's the new maximum excursion line, what's going on? <coughs> Excuse me, we're decelerating or slowing down, okay? <clears throat> okay, so I know I'm within 80% of my horizontal or 2D target, so what do I do now? I mean, I can hold out for that, but what else could I do? There's no box to go other than here, sorry. That don't work. What else? I mean, I, that's fine. I'll be under there. But what else can I do? Why? Well, sure, I could just hit the. Sure, I could just exit. You know, what else can I do? Where else might price run out of energy? Yeah, Scotty's got it. How about the blue median line? How about the new speed line? Both, both good ideas. Sure. 3D stop at the median line. Sure. Why not? Well, that's not a stop. It's a limit sell. Just so we get the lingo right. Okay? Right? So, either one of these. That makes sense? Choose your poison. Remember, this is not resistance, but... You're a tick away from the median line, so using anywhere in here is like selling at the median line. Does that make sense? So we're going to shift to plan B. The blue has been working all along. Let's sell at the blue median line. Make sense? Okay, let's see what we get. 
close on our highs close on our highs you've made a decision this is not the time to now go oh you know what let me just pull that order and put it back up at the top once you make the decision stay with it there's a reason you had that intuition that's tape reading okay follow me double tops haven't gotten to our line damn it pull back uh, pull back looking for a top and can you see the orders just let me out see it plan B just let me out put those orders in there out thank you appreciate it <coughs> look we're out and we're out at uh, 04 instead of 10 okay what's well, not the end of the world because we got in at 141.19 that's lots of dough two handles and change okay it's more than two thousand dollars a contract all right now no follow through close on the low we'll do this real quick and thank you for being patient I seem to be getting slower in my old age you know now, now that I'm a couple weeks older I'm going to show you real quick so we had a and wiser well let's hope so we had a uh, here's our top look at this pullback we don't want it to take out any of these lows now we take out a low happy to be out make sense more new lows happy to be out more new lows and we're all the way down at the green median lower parallel where we entered the first time Actually, we entered the median line, but now we're at the lower parallel and the blue warning line together. Now, I'm just going to squeeze it in, and I'll leave this for you guys to work over. There's an entry here somewhere, if you can find it. You'll have to decide whether or not you like the logic of it, if you want to do it. If you don't want to do it, that's fine, too. But watch what happens. It's not a bad entry to chase, guys. This was a six-handle, $6,000 contract. Never took out a low. Look it up. Don't look it up. That's up to you. There's all kinds of work in there. So you can look at my big picture lines and decide if there was an entry for you that worked. Okay? I, let me just do this. Okay? Okay? You see it? You see the spiral go horizontal and then widen out? We went through that before. All right, so big picture of the trade. There's the trade right there. Greatest trade in the world? No, but it's a very nice trade took me a long time to get interested but in the end risking 250 to make 1500 I do that all day long questions did you learn anything Yes. Okay, so again, 
for me, I, for me to get interested, I needed an event. Wait for the light to come on. Yeah. Okay. I needed it for, for whatever reason. There were, there were other ways to get into this trade. But it wasn't interesting enough for me until the event happened. The event gave me a nice stop that I could see across the room. The other ones, the stops were very squishy. I didn't like the stops. I wasn't even that wild about the entries. But this gave me, the event gave me lots of interest, a stop that I liked, a stop that most other people wouldn't see. And if you widened out the gap, it washed out the longs and then took off, which is exactly what we always want to do. Clean the book if possible, right? So this trade you didn't take half profit. No, this was a normal trade. This was this was not a corner trade. I only take half profits on corner trades. So this was just a simple, let me just bond trade. Okay? I do bond trade. So very helpful. Things clarified and new stuff. Cool. Alright guys. I appreciate the time off. Um, I've been off for 10 days. Me too. When you come back from a break, what do you do? That is, do you sit and look at, for, look at a chart or is there a step process you go through? David, what I tend to do is I go to my safety five markets and I page through until I find something interesting and then I do replay on it uh, bar by bar up to the current and then start watching it from there and what I try to do is hit a single I want to get three to one I just want to get in the market and try and get some money does the safety five markets change from time to time yeah but not very much it's basically Canada Aussie not the euro right my fund is closed for the year as of the Friday I, I left yes and it may or may not have beat last year natural gas crude right now crude's not always in it but crude is in it right now gold is in it sometimes that you know I mean I rotate some stuff in and out yen I'll rotate in or out um, all right so um, you were biased on the long for the beginning did your knowledge of money flows or fundamentals like sell oil buy bonds influence you um, you know Scotty um, I would say yes except for one thing I have to tell you the truth I was in a vacuum for the time I was gone so I had no idea what was going on and when I came back I actually didn't pull up an oil chart or a or, or a uh, index chart but um, for whatever reason I was biased right away and I decided to follow it out and I was as this happened right here if we hadn't done a forced pivot right here, I probably would have chucked this chart right there and said, okay, you know what? I need to take another day off and then come back and watch something else because that was a waste of my time. But when that forced pivot happened, I kind of perked up. I don't really like having the bias. but um, So, yeah, my five markets will change. And they'll change by whether or not they're active and interesting. We I thought it was also that blue initial line of force told you the bias. Well, yeah, no, 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 it did. But what I'm saying, though, Ouija, is I had followed along for, what, three days with no, no, no emotional interest or impulsive interest or, or pull the trigger type interest. And at some point, enough's enough, right? I got the bias, but it's not doing anything for me. What's the point? Move on. Go back to a market where you don't have a bias and see if you can read it. So I was just about to chuck this. And then the force pivot said, wait, hang on. Maybe you got something going here. It, sa it saved me. I, I would not have stuck around to see this. Does that make sense? I, I think you can only invest so much time in a market. And then it's time to move on even if you think that and all of a sudden it looked like the logic started to click before I didn't really feel like the logic was helping me just enough to keep me interested but this now started to make it look interesting and then it was easy to go bottom shoulder strong reaction in so any other questions 
IB is off this, obviously, because it would have been yesterday. It's in a November 13th, I believe. And um, we're back on normal schedule now. So, okay, have a great weekend. I will see you all later. Um, I appreciate the time off well, again. I appreciate all of you. You guys take care. And um, I hope you practiced the bread and butter part of your trading while I was gone. And now we'll start to add some other things in. Okay? All right, everybody, take care. I'll try and get it up early. Try and get the video up early. See you soon. Still looking for the knife to butter with. Well, it'll come, Matt. Don't get a sharp one because I'll tell you it's hard to butter with a sharp knife. See you soon.